great question and I think like pretty much every company of worth has written down their promotion levels according to uh, where there is at least one dimension of levels which is about increasing complexity and scope of projects. I do think people use both scope and complexity so that it allows for you to grow when the complexity of the project is coming from the scope rather than from like the mathematics or the kind of code that you have to write. Sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that the complexity of the code is equivalent to the complexity that's expected at the next level. It's not really that. It's really about what is the problem? How nebulous is the problem statement? What do people expect from someone at your level versus people at the next level and how you deliver? So I think it is important to grow your problem scope. And the complexity could come in many forms. It could be that you're doing something no one else is doing in the industry or in your company. Or it could be that you're doing it at a scale that no one else has attempted before. Or it could be that even your manager and your reporting chain doesn't know how to solve a problem and you come up with that. So there are different ways in growing scope and complexity. And I think a lot of times the best ways to sort of pitch yourself for the next level through scope and complexity is to pitch it yourself. Really survey the land that you're in and basically say, hey, I'm doing this this feels like an opportunity that no one is working on. Can you have a conversation with your reporting chain? Hey, can I go into that territory and expand my scope on my own? Like a lot of times I find ICs wait to be given opportunity. I don't see people creating opportunities for themselves as much. The reality is by nature, in, humans are inherently selfish. And so they mostly think about themselves. You like to think that everyone is thinking about you, but most people are just thinking about themselves, right? So even when it comes to creating opportunities for you, you are the most likely candidate to create more opportunity for yourself by making a compelling case for it. Right? This is something I learned from grad school, where in grad school, I was so on my own often, where like every most problem statements came out of me, then I would go to my advisor and say, hey, can I work on this? Can this be a problem that the industry or, or academia cares about? So I got that training in grad school and sort of, I find that to be very useful in pure software engineering industries as well. It comes across in two ways. One is you have control over the destiny of that project, which means you get first dibs on a project, on an area, because you talked about it before everyone else. You People generally think that, okay, you've been talking about it, you deserve to be given an opportunity to work and expand your scope into that area or complexity, whichever it is, or, or pro preferably both. And then second is like, how do you sort of pitch it in a way that feels compelling? Rather than saying, hey, we should do this because other people are doing it, you should like make a business case, like, ICs should also think like business people in that they are selling a project, they are making a business case for why this project should be worked on and if that is compelling then they are the top choice usually to be working on it. And it also show, demonstrates to their leadership that they have the ability to invent, find new problems and make a dent there. So I would encourage you to be entrepreneurial within traditional companies when it comes to expanding your scope which is something I actually see very little of. And I find that those who do that, a lot of other ones that are progressing fastest in their career.